Hello everyone, welcome to Math with Allison. Today we're continuing our integration series, so we're going to be talking about how we can integrate even an odd function. I think this is a fun part of calculus. So let's go ahead and dive into it. We have the definition of an even function, and it's where we have f of negative x is equal to f of x. So that negative kind of goes away. So let's look through this example. We have f of x equals cosine of x. I have it mapped out right here. When it's even, it reflects across the y-axis. So why is that the case? It's because we take our a value and it gives us a corresponding f of a. But I can plug that into negative a and I still get that same exact y value. So here the y value doesn't care if the x value is positive or negative. It's still going to give the same y value. So let's talk about odd functions. In this case, the negative value doesn't go away, but it's like you can pull it out of the function. So f of negative x is equal to negative f of x. And so our example here is sine of x, and this is when the function reflects across the origin. So here we take our a value and we plug it into our function and we get f of a. Well, what would happen if we took the negative a value? We have the same height, but now in the negative direction. So instead of going up to f of a, we go down to negative f of a. So it just makes the y value negative. So question, how does this apply to integrate? We're going to take a look at integrating over negative a to a. So let's go ahead and go through this example. We want to integrate f of x equals x squared over the interval negative 2 to 2. So you already have that drawn out, and we're hoping to find that area in the highlighted region. So in order to find that area, I know I need to take the integral from negative 2 to 2 of our function x squared in terms of x. So when I do that, I'm going to go ahead and take the antiderivative first. So I add 1 to the exponent, and I divide by that new exponent. And we're integrating from negative 2 to 2. So let's go ahead and plug in those values. When I plug in upper, I get 2 cubed divided by 3, and we subtract that lower value plugged in. So let's math this out. We get 8 divided by 3 minus negative 8 divided by 3. So notice how this becomes a giant plus. This is just equal to 8 thirds plus 8 thirds, which we know is equal to 16 thirds. So what's special about this? It's when we plug in that negative 2. Negative 2 cubed is equal to a negative value, and that entire thing turns into a plus because we subtract it. Subtracting a negative results in adding. And so what happens is we just double our area. And so that is the trick with even functions. Instead of integrating from negative 2 to 2, I'm just going to go ahead and say, okay, this is 2 times the area between 0 and 2 of our function. And we can see that in the picture. We have that these two right here are the exact same area, so why not just save us some time and instead integrate it from 0 to 2? The reason is because usually when you plug in 0, it gives nicer numbers to work with. Um, maybe some people don't think that, but let's go ahead and do this. So I'm going to have 2 times the antiderivative, which is x cubed divided by 3, and now we're plugging in 0 to 2. So here we get 2 times 2 cubed divided by 3 minus 0 cubed divided by 3, and see that's where that 0 gets to go away, and so we have 2 times 8 divided by 3, which is equal to that same value of 16 divided by 3. So that is our fun fact. If f is even and integrable over negative a to a, so notice here it has to be the exact same number, then we can just multiply that integral by 2 and evaluate it from 0 to a instead of negative a to a. So we have that the areas are symmetric. So here we have an example where we can go ahead and work that out. We got negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 of x squared plus, cosine, plus 2 cosine of x. So looking at this, we can tell that it's an even function. But if you're not sure, we can do it the old-fashioned way. So we, here we have f of negative x needs to equal f of x. So let's go ahead and plug in negative x into our function. We get negative x to the power of 2 plus 2 cosine of negative x. So negative x squared is just going to be positive x squared. And we already know cosine is even, so this becomes cosine of x. So here we know this is an even function, and we can go ahead and apply the rule that we learned. So instead of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, I'm going to say this is 2 times the area between 0 and pi over 2 of our function. So first, let's go ahead and find that antiderivative. So I'm going to add 1 to the exponent, divide by that new exponent, and we get plus 2 sine of x from 0 to pi over 2. So let's go ahead and do our thing. Let's plug in upper minus lower.
So here we have this whole thing goes to zero. We have sine of zero is equal to zero. Zero cubed divided by three is zero. So now let's just go ahead and focus on this first part. So we have two times, and that becomes pi cubed divided by two cubed, which is eight, all that divided by three, plus two times one, as we have sine of pi over two is equal to one. Let's go ahead and simplify that again. So we get pi cubed divided by eight times three, which is 24, minus that value of two. And for our last step, we can just multiply that two in. So that becomes pi cubed over 12, if I divide it, minus four. And I would leave that as our final solution. So now let's talk about odd function. What is special about them? And just looking at the picture, I think you can have a good guess. But we're going to go ahead and integrate f of x equals x cubed over the interval of negative 1 to 1. So let's go ahead and do it the old-fashioned way. We have the antiderivative of negative 1 to 1 of x cubed dx. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. We have x to the power of 4 divided by 4 from negative 1 to 1. We're going to go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. Notice here we got a value of 0, and it's because when we took the antiderivative, well, now we have an even function. And when we have negative 1 to the power of 4, there's no negative to cancel out the minus, which results in the area just subtracting itself. And this makes sense with our picture because this right here is negative, and on this other side it's positive. And so the negative and the positive areas just cancel each other out. So this is actually the fun little fact for our odd functions. If f is odd and integrable over negative a to a, then its antiderivative or the integral is just going to be zero. So here we have a couple problems. We're going to go ahead and mix it up. We have cosine of x minus 4 sine cubed of x. So I'm going to go ahead and separate this into two integrals because one of them is going to be even, one of them is going to be odd. Okay, let's talk about cosine of x. We already know that this right here is even, and so we can go ahead and apply our rules. So this now goes between 0 to pi over 2 of cosine of x dx. Now let's go ahead and talk about sine cubed of x. So I already know that sine is odd. So we have sine of negative x is equal to negative sine of x. Now what would happen if we raise that to the power of 3? You guys probably already have a guess because to the power of 3 is odd. But here we get sine cubed of negative x is equal to negative 1 cubed is negative 1. So that negative stays there, and we get that cubed. So we have that this right here is an odd function, which this is the trick. We can take really complex functions and make them way simpler because that whole thing is going to equal 0. So now all we're doing is working with this integral. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. We have the antiderivative cosine is sine. And don't forget that 2 is still hanging out there. And this is between 0 and pi over 2. Now we can go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So that 2 is hanging out. And we have sine of pi over 2 minus sine of 0. And we know sine of 0 is just equal to 0. Sine of pi over 2 is equal to 1. So we get 2 times 1, which is equal to 2. And that is our whole integral. It's way simpler than having to try to calculate that whole thing out. We got one more here. We have x to the power of 4, which you can probably guess what that is, and 3x to the power of 3. Let's go ahead and separate that into two integrals. Okay, so x to the power of 4 is for sure going to be even because we have it raised to an even power. So this is going to be 2 times the integral of 0 to 2 of x to the power of 4 dx. Now we have that x cubed is an odd function. So this integral is between negative 2 and 2, which tells me my whole integral is going to go to 0. So again, we're just using this rule to simplify them out a little bit, save us some time. So let's go ahead and take the antiderivative. We have x to the power of 5 divided by 5, and this is from 0 to 2. So here we have 2, and I'm going to go ahead and plug in upper minus lower. So we get 2 to the power of 5 divided by 5 minus 0 to the power of 5 divided by 5. That is nice because we get to just work with 0, and that becomes 2 times 32 divided by 5, or we can rewrite that as 64 divided by 5. And so that is going to be that entire area of the function. So that's all I have for us today in this video. If you enjoyed it, I have many more like it, so make sure to check out my playlist. They're linked down below. Otherwise, please give this video a thumbs up and comment other problems or topics you'd like to see done. Thanks for watching.